Hey fellow SweetScript developers, Eric from Stoic Software here again, and in this video we are going to learn how to avoid reinventing the wheel by leveraging third-party libraries within our SweetScript. Uh, before we get started, if you would like to become a competent, confident NetSuite developer yourself, you can get started with my free course. You will find a link down in the description. All right, let's get started. Leveraging libraries in SweetScript 2.0 and beyond is a very straightforward process. Just like any other script or module we want to use, we need to start by getting a file, a source file, into the file cabinet. Um, then we will add a reference to that file in our own SweetScript module. And then there are some optional steps we can do after that to make the process even easier. So we'll go through each of these steps in depth. First, we need to add the source file of our library to the file cabinet. And we can add that anywhere we want, but in order to keep things organized, there are a few places that I recommend. Um, this is a general purpose library that's going to be commonly used by a whole bunch of different scripts, different uh, applications, then a lib folder right under sweet scripts is a great place to put those. If it's more of a project-specific library and it's only going to be used by one feature or one uh, project, then a lib folder underneath, hopefully, your project folder, hopefully you are separating things out in your suite scripts folder, um, a lib directory under there is great. And if this is a suite app, hopefully your suite app has its own uh, lib directory as well for all the libraries and custom modules that you're building. Okay, to start with, we have this existing client script. It's fairly simple. It is deployed to the project record, and it is written in SweetScript 2.1. Um, client scripts are a little shaky on their 2.1 support, so if you're following along and get some trouble, just um, down-convert it to 2.0, and you should be okay. Um, the script just looks on page init. It looks to see if the last baseline date of the project is more than two months ago. Then it will just prompt and give a very simple prompt, alerting the user as such. So, um, of key interest here is our calculation of what what is two months. Um, this is a very naive calculation. Uh, so we just calculate how long is two months in milliseconds, and uh, we're basing that on a thirty-day month. So it's very naive. It's not going to always be correct. There are lots of exceptions to that. There are leap years to handle. There are months with 28 days. There are months with 31 days. Um, so this is not always going to be accurate. And to, to write the algorithm to calculate what is two calendar months uh, is extremely complex. And I don't want to do it. So, so uh, somebody else has already done that for us. So we are going to use a third-party library called Moment, Moment.js. If you're not familiar, this is one of my favorite libraries for anything involving dates, times, calendars. Um, it is the best. So we are going to grab the library, just download the raw uh, source file, and then we have uh, our folder here in the file cabinet where we're going to add it. So I've added a lib folder to our third-party video project, and I'm just going to add the moment library. All right, so that is accessible in our file cabinet. And that brings us to our second step, which is to actually reference this library in our script. Now, in SweetScript, there is no difference between a third-party library or a custom library module we built ourselves. There's no distinction. They behave the same. Um, SweetScript doesn't care whether you built it or someone else built it. As long as that file is available in the file cabinet, we can add it to our script. So back in our script, we are going to add a new reference to our moment module. So the moment library lives in the in a directory below this client script file. We go back and look at our file cabinet. 
Here is our client script file. We go into the lib directory to access moment.min.js. And in our module paths, we cut off the JS extension, so we're left with lib directory moment.min file, and we are going to alias that module as moment. So what I want to do with moment now is completely replace our our calculation of months and milliseconds and comparing times, and uh, we're going to let moment do that work for us. Okay, so what we should be able to see here is our calculation, our script just got a lot more simple, sim a lot simpler and a lot more readable. Um, so the first thing we do, when we pull the last baseline field, we want to turn it into a moment right away. Now the last baseline could be empty. The project may have never been baselined before. Um, so we want to make sure that we get a valid date uh, first. And so that's what we check right here. Moment has a nice handy method to check whether a date is valid. And then we do our two months um, calculation. So a, a moment with no parameters just gives me the, right now, gives me today. The diff method calculates the difference between two moments. Uh, so we're, we're taking the difference between right now and the last baseline in months. So we're telling moment to do that calculation and then convert it to months. And if that is greater than or, e greater than or equal to two months, then we want to show our message. Now there are also some optional things we can do to make alias or make referencing third-party modules and using them a little easier. And one of those things is to alias them. So it's often the case that you might reuse these third-party libraries. We might use Moment all over our suite scripts, several different projects, um, several different features, several different scripts. So we don't always want to have to know um, the path to the Moment library. And so what we can do is add the require con config file and use its paths property to give moment an alias. So this is what NetSuite does with their module. You, kn you don't know the path to the n slash record module. You just put n slash record, and NetSuite knows that that alias points to some file somewhere on the NetSuite server, uh, and that gets loaded into your script. And that's what we're going to do with Moment. All right, so the first thing is that Moment is no longer project-specific. Um, it no longer just lives in this third-party video project. So I'm actually going to just remove the lib directory here. And instead, we're going to add Moment to this uh, higher-level lib directory right under Sweet Scripts. So that's where it will live in this account from now on. Now, the first step in this process is to add a new configuration file. Um, it can be named whatever you want, but it is a JSON file. There's a help, there's a document and help called require configuration. So check that out for reference. Um, and what we want to do is use the paths object of this configuration file and give the file we just uploaded an alias. And so it'll look something like this. Uh, we have our paths object. Then the keys of this object are the aliases uh, of different libraries. So we can, we can alias as many libraries as we want to right here. Um, so the key. So we want this to be aliased as moment in the future. And then the value of each uh, pair is then the path to the appropriate file. So we uploaded moment.min to this lib directory right under Sweet Scripts. Um, the slash, the root, is relevant to the file cabinet relative, excuse me, to the file cabinet root. So um, file cabinet, Sweet Scripts, lib, moment.min.js. In the future, any scripts referencing this config file will, if you um, provide moment as a module name, it will look at this path for that file. How do we do that? 
First step is to reference over in our script, reference or add uh, this configuration file. Well, I suppose before that, we should upload this configuration file to our file cabinet. We could make this a global config file. We could make it, I, I like to make it um, local to a project. Different projects may have different configurations. So we're gonna add it here. AMD config.json file. You'll notice it is a JSON file. It's not a JavaScript file. Okay, so that is added to our file cabinet at the same um, directory, same folder as our script file is. So there is a JavaScript tag for, uh, or a JS doc tag for referencing the config file. And that is the NAMD config tag. I actually need to put dot slash there. We're telling um, our script to use the config file located at this path here. And now, instead of uh, putting the full path to moment here, which now actually would have been something like up or, or that, we don't have to know the path. We just need to know the alias from the config file. And that's it. Now this will work exactly the same as something like n slash record or n slash search, right? They just have a name, not a full path. That's what this alias uh, allows us to do for our custom modules as well. And that's really all there is to it. We have greatly simplified our script here. We have uh, taken the burden off of ourselves to know uh, how to calculate how long a calendar month is. Um, especially if you use the Julian calendar, that is a pain in the butt. Uh, we And so we've let the much larger, much smarter JavaScript community do that for us. And we can lean on their work by pulling in this moment library. That's it for this lesson. Hopefully this helps you see how to leverage third-party libraries within your own suite script, saving you a little time, helping you to focus on the problems you need to be solving, not the problems that have already been solved. So if you want more videos like these, you probably know how the internet works. Like, comment, subscribe, and share. And thanks for watching. Keep learning, keep sharing, and I'll see you next time. I hope this helped you see how you can... Nope, already. Nope. And thanks for watching. Keep watching. Nope. 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 Keep learning. Keep learning. Keep watching, too.